Okay, in this um, video, we're going to do a review of chapter three. And chapter three focuses on descriptive statistics, mean, median, mode, percentiles, and also looking at measures of location. Sorry, not location, but also variability, which looks at things like the range, interquartile range, standard deviation, coefficient of variation, and so forth. So here we go. We, um, in terms of uh, measures of location, we ha what we're trying to do is essentially look at a data set and determine where most of the values tend to cluster. Um, usually we focus on the mean, but there are other measures of location. Sometimes we're interested in certain percentiles, such as what is the 95th percentile or the 80th percentile or the 25th percentile. So these are other measures of location that could be useful to us. Um, in terms of uh, measures of variability, sometimes we're interested in just how much spread there is in the data, whether or not the numbers go from a very low to very high, or whether or not the numbers are bunched up and clustered in a very narrow range. So all of those are very good measures of, um, that we can use to describe a data set. So starting off with the most simple and most popular, most common measure is really the uh, popular, uh, the, the mean. And the mean or the arithmetic mean is another term that we use. It's just simply a sum of all of the values that we have in our sample or the population. And then we divide it by the number of values that we have. And that particular um, value is calculated very simply by using the following mathematical notation. As we can see here, we're simply summing, that is we're taking the sum, I'm going to just change the color of my pen. I think this color would work nicely. We're simply taking the sum, <coughs> excuse me, of all of the values in the, in the sample, and then we're dividing it by the number of values that we have. So sum of x over n, and that gives us what we call an arithmetic mean or sample mean. But if we had the population, then all we need to do is to divide instead of by n, we divide by capital N, which would be the population size. And that would give us the population mean. Note that there is a difference between how we denote the sample mean and the population mean. Sample mean is x bar. Population mean we denote by mu. If I could do that a little better, something like this. It looks like a u, but it has a long tail uh, on the up, on the on the front part of it. All right. And what we know is that anytime we obtain a sample mean, it is an estimate of that population mean. Always keep that in mind. Sample values. Uh, estimates of population values, all right? So that's the population mean. Um, we have other means, no, sorry, that was population mean. We have a different type of mean, which we call a weighted mean. Sometimes not all of the values um, are treated equally, or sometimes we have data in such a way that rather than having every single value, we have a frequency table that gives us um, a particular value on the number of occurrences of that value. Let me just give you an example. Say a particular store or restaurant wanted to look at how customers um, see its, its menu, to what extent that they are satisfied with the menu. So we'll say that a one is that they're not happy with it, but a five is that they're ecstatic. So if we collected data and say the company looked at um, so the rating, sorry, the rating, and the number of people, number of people number of people giving that rating. So the ratings will go from five, four, three, two, one. And say 
out of a, if we had a sample of a hundred people, forty people gave it a five. Uh, twenty-five people give them a four. Uh, fifteen people give it a three. So the sixty-five and fifteen, we're looking at eighty. Uh, twelve people give a two, and eight people give a one. So that adds up to a hundred people. If I were to ask you, what is the average uh, satisfaction rating for the restaurant? Um, we wouldn't just sum up these five values and divide by, um, divide by five. That would mean that each of them are equally weighted. But because they're not equally weighted, we will say let our rating be X and then let the number of people be the weight. In other words, each rating is weighted by the number of people that actually um, use that uh, or provided that rating. And then if we want to calculate it now, the average score for the restaurant, we would do this. We would say the average score for the restaurant is a weighted score, which would be the sum of the X values times their weights, right? Divided by the sum of their weights. So for our example, it would be X bar would be 40 multiplied by 5, so 5 times 40, plus 4 times 25, and right, it's not looking too good right now, plus 3 times 15, not easy to write on a tablet, uh, let's see here. Plus 2 times 12 plus 1 times 8. And when we multiply all these values, we divide by 100. So that's how we would actually calculate the weighted mean uh, in, in this case right here. All right. And um, let's see if I could actually do some mental math because I don't have a calculator with me right now. But that would be 200, 5 fours are 20, 200 plus 4 by 25 is 100 plus 3 by 15 is 45 plus 2 is 24 plus 8. And um, that is all over 100 divided by 100. And so that is 345. Um, if we add 24 to that, that gives us uh, 369. 369 plus 8. 69 plus 8 is 77. So that's 377 divided by 100, 3.77. So the average score for the restaurant in terms of satisfaction is 3.77. Actually, we do a very similar exercise when we're calculating the average um, evaluation, course evaluation score for a professor. Uh, because a number of you will give us fives, a number of you will give us fours, a number of you will give us threes, and so forth. And that is exactly how we compute our evaluation scores. So that's a weighted average. Or oh, no, we didn't mean in this case here we have a, a little problem in that the x values are missing. All right, but we could correct that, not a problem. If we continue, there's an example here, and I'm just going to skip through that. We talked about so far the arithmetic mean and the weighted mean, but then sometimes the way in which uh, um, values are distributed in a data set the arithmetic mean is not the best measure of central tendency. Um, if particularly if you have extreme values, the extreme values tend to bias the average. So if you have very uh, a couple of extreme large values in your data set relative to the rest of the values, 
it tends to bring up the average. If you have some very low values relative to the rest of the values, a couple of low values, then those are outliers that tend to bring down the average. It's kind of equivalent if we think of it in the context of an exam. If most people got, say, a mark of about uh, six, between 60 and 75, but two students got 100, then those, those two marks will actually bias the results in terms of what the actual average is for the class. And then, of course, if most people got between, uh, say, 65 and 75, but you have two students who failed with marks of like 20 and 15, then those two marks will tend to bias the average downwards as well. So when you have a situation when the data is skewed, the median is usually a better measure of uh, central tendency. And so to calculate the median, what we need to do is to take our data set and arrange all of our values in ascending order and pick the middle value, all right? Now we have a basic rule where if, if n is even, average the two middle values. Right? If it is even. But if it is odd, then you simply pick that middle value. If n is odd, pick the middle value. All right. So if we have, for example, 13, n was 13. Well, let's start with even first. If n was 12, then half of 12 is 6. So the two middle values would be the 6th value and the 7th value. So our median would be the average of the two middle values, x12 plus x13 x12, x13 over 2. So those would be the two middle values that we would average if we were doing this. If n instead was 13, then 1, 2, as we get to 13, the seventh value, value number 7, would be the one in the middle because there are now six values on this side, six values on that side. And so we would choose the seventh value. So the median would be X7. The median, note that the median is not seven. The location of the median is the seventh value. And so we denote that seventh value by X7, where X is the value, seven is the location of that value. Okay, so that is um, the, the median, how we calculate the median. If n is even, we pick the two middle values and we average them. If n is odd, then we simply pick middle value. And that is how we would identify the median. Now, the mode is another measure of a central tendency. In other words, if we have a lot of values, um, a, um, a particular value repeated several times, we call that the mode. And so the mode by definition is just the value that has the highest frequency um, in, the, in, in the data set. Okay? And sometimes it's possible to have more than one mode. So keep that in mind. Let's look at percentiles. Now, we could talk about quartiles and percentiles, but we know that we could convert quartiles to percentiles. So if we handle percentiles, then we're good because uh, the quartiles would divide our data set into four equal parts, which means that there's a bottom 25, then there's the next 25, the next 25, and the next 25. So that basically is equivalent to 25%, 50%, 75%, and then 100%. So if we know how to find percentiles, then we could find quartiles. So we don't have to do them as two separate uh, topics. All right. So to find percentiles, the formula that we use is this formula right here, which is we try to find the location. Now, always remember that the first thing you have to do is to arrange your data in ascending order. 
So, and then we find the location of the particular percentile that we're interested in. So if we're looking for the 40th percentile, then P would be 40. So 40 over 100 multiplied by the sample size. So that's essentially what we're doing here. This part right here would just be the percentile represented as a, as a fraction or decimal and we multiply by the sample size. Now, we have a, a simple rule that we're going to apply. The simple rule basically says this. If n is not an integer, in other words, no, if i, sorry, is not an integer, that means, and you say, well, what does that mean? If it's not an integer, it's not a whole number, like 10, 15, 25, 35, 27, and so forth. These are integers. Non-integers are like 2.11, 3.77, 2.56. These are non-integers. So if it is not an integer, then we simply round up. So in a case like this, if um, our value turns out to be, say, 2.25, then we round up to 3. If i turns out to be 20.75, then we round up to 21. So remember, these are not the values of the percentages themselves, the percentiles. They are the locations. So that would be the value of i. So in this case, in the top case right here, it would be the third value. In the second case right here, it would be the 21st value. All right? And, and so we have to order our data and identify the right one. If it is an integer, then what we will do is we'll average that location value with the next one, just higher than it. So if we actually got a, a value for i, that was say 15, then to get the percentile, we would take the average, the percentile that we're looking for, x for the particular percentile, would be x15 plus x 16 over 2. Well, I'm squeezing this up in here. I'm not sure. I could certainly create a new page. So the percentile would be x15 plus x16 over 2. All right? That's how it is. If we get any, any i that is integer, so then the percentile value would be xi plus xi plus 1. That means the next one over 2. All right, so I hope we, we understand that. And as I've already mentioned, quartiles are the same as percentiles. So you can find the quartiles by simply finding the corresponding uh, percentiles.